Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of them late nights and them wet wipes. You know who this is. You know who I be. I am one of your co-hosts. I am Michael Akadiri. And to the left, to the left, who am I joined by? I uh, ask shit for your bill payers' permission. Who's that? That's me. It's Darren Bush. It's AK Darren G. How are we doing? And we're joined by a very, very special guest today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce this guest because I, I, I'd be doing my research. Not only is she a comedian... Not only is she an actress, not only is she a podcaster, she is also a mother and also has the title of being the first mother on this podcast. It is Kelly Ford, people. Thank you. First mum on the pod. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. Happy to be here. It's quite late though for a mum, right? <laughs> it, it's very late. It's in the name, late nights and wet wipes, man. So you, we, we we stick it. We're on brand right now. Yeah, it's so lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And I should say off the top, you're used to a guy by now talking about being four point five. Yeah, Thomas Skelly. Thomas Skelly. All this <laughs> non-science that he'll be spouting, but he had to attend to some business. He actually is being a father yeah, right now. He's, he's parenting. parenting so to be a parent, That's so good of him. So that's good. Of it, that's good of him. So respect to Kazim. So um, let's get straight into a listener's question. Thank you for sending this in. And yeah, Kelly, we're good to get your thoughts Love on it. this. Um, and you're 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 a mother yourself, so maybe you could relate to this more. Okay. So a mother's written in because her daughter essentially is a bit embarrassed by the mother. Ooh. So essentially, they were at school. And she went to pick up her child outside the school and she could see those these girls that, you know, the daughter kind of hangs around with. And then the daughter breaks free, sort of comes into the car and then sits by the mum. The mum's like, oh, okay, how you doing? She's not really talking to her, not really communicating. Then these said girls come close to the car. Then the daughter's starting to slide down and hide and conceal uh, her identity. Then these girls sort of go off. She's like, drive, mum, drive, drive, drive. So she starts driving. And she's like, what's all that about? Because you don't normally talk to me like that. And then she's like, oh, I was embarrassed by how you look. <gasps> and the mom's like, well, this is going to be one thing. I think she's talking about my weight. And then she's like, you know, I'm not terribly out of shape, but, you know, I could lose a few pounds. And then she's like, the daughter's like, I didn't want these girls to think I'm part of a fat family. Wow. And God, this is a big one. It's a big one. This is a one. comedy podcast. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> it was meant to be, but sometimes we get into deep emotive yeah. issues. So, yes, so the mom, mom was trying to figure out, like, what does she do, man? She's got a daughter who is clearly hanging around with people that's making her feel conscious about her weight. She had her daughter tell her that she's fat. So yeah. she's not happy about that. And her daughter's quite, she's like, mom's like, look, my daughter's quite active. She's not, she's not she's not fat. Um, she may be a bit wide in places, but she's not fat. She, you know, she's healthy and active. So... What a challenge. Yeah. What do you do? You're, you're a mother. What uh, a great question. Yeah, you're... And I, I don't know. Hopefully you've not been in that situation, but, you know, what... what do I, I, I hope you be out. You that old to be. I've got a seven-year-old and yep. she's definitely start become, starting to become aware of her weight and her mm -hmm. physicality. Um, so, this is a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. Um... I have modeled quite a lot in my life and I've been, yeah. I've done body positivity campaigns where yes. I've done 
um, nude. I've done nudes from behind for like Good Housekeeping magazine, the stuff you do for money. And, hey, um, it's, it's got to be done, man. If your derriere can make you some money. <laughs> And so I've done quite a lot of that stuff. And, and, and I've actually always kind of spoken quite widely that it's really important that we all represent ourselves, um, all shapes and sizes. However, over the last 18 months, I was telling um, Michael before the show, I've just lost 16 kilos, two and a half stone. And I'm on yeah. a, yeah. <laughs> A month raising a toddler, it's quite hard, you Absolutely. know, to make these changes. But amongst that is kind of, I was like, I really want to represent health and wellness yeah. to my girls. Yeah. So that they see their mummy in a great light. I'll always have a big bum and big hips. That will be the, always the fact. But I think it's that thing of like, the conversations always have to be had. Yeah. Of like, why are you feeling that way? Yeah. What is normal? And let's all be comfortable in our own skin. How do you create that kind of, making sure that children understand the importance of what is inside that matters? Yeah. A girl's a bitchy though. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. So I think I've been on a real journey with this and my daughter's definitely seen mummy kind of move from maybe a slightly unhappier and you know, heavier person into a, but still I was at that time representing fat people in, in body positive way, but. Yeah. Inside, I wasn't feeling positive. So that's so interesting. So that's very now interesting. Now I'm on this other side where I'm like channeling fitness and wellness. Um, but I'm talking to her all the time. The other day, she put a big coat on and went, I don't want to wear it. I look fat. And I was like, Well, we need to, Ooh, we yeah. need to sit down. Yeah, there's a lot, of, there's a lot, of, excuse the pun, there's a lot of weight in the term fat. Yeah. Like it's, it's, so loaded. you have to go back and go, Right. So why are you feeling that way? You know, you have to wear a jumper and a coat because it's zero degrees outside. Yeah. Like, you're beautiful. Yeah. Everything about you is beautiful. You've got, you know, you're a fantastic human. You're kind. You've got empathy. Yeah. These are all the traits that make a great human. Yeah. It's a worry, though, at seven years old that she's using that language. So I need to go and read some books, I think. Do you think that stuff she's bringing home from school with her sort of her peers and her age group? Uh, now yeah. I'm now talking about your Maybe. daughter. Maybe. Maybe. And actually, yeah, it's a, it's a big one though, isn't it? Because girls, if they're having that language at age seven, what is that 13 year old gonna be? Yeah. You know, especially with the influence of social media and eating disorders on the rise and, you know, the new understanding of what is beautiful. It's kind of, it is a concern. It's tough, yeah, because like, me and my wife use quite brutal language to each other when it comes to staying in shape and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, it's obviously that's, we're adults, we can process that. So, you know, your wife or your husband is saying, oh, you, do you need another pack of crisps? Need? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's, it's, laughs> we're talking to each other going, oh yeah, I did say that, I should watch what I'm eating. So are you just holding each other accountable? Exactly. Okay. But when my daughter's in earshot, we avoid using words like fat and stuff mm. because it's that thing of, it, it's, my daughter's never shown me she's only two so she hasn't shown me anything like that yeah it's having that in, that, in your head and Absolutely. what it means and you just don't know when people how people see themselves right like mm. kind of body dysmorphia and you've seen that we've seen people like, positively and negatively we've seen yeah. people in fine shape literally totally fine and they're just like no I've, I've put on one percent body fat mm. yeah 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 men, men, men and women you know men, men and women yeah and then you see it the other way where there's like, no, I'm beautiful. It's like, you, you could, you could, like, you, you could, could, you could lose some. You could, you lose, could some. lose some. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're, you're out of breath and you're eating ice cream and it sits in the morning. Like, just what are you it's doing? The eye of the beholder, Darren. Yeah, it's like you're making poor health choices. Here. So it's it's that balance. And yeah, I guess with your kids, yeah, like you said, I think it's more to do with health. What, health is one, yeah, and both physical and mental. Your body will almost be your body in, in some respects, but it's like if you're if you're eating well yeah. and you think of yourself well, then it kind of the body takes care of itself in a, in a way. So it's like with the in the, the question from the mum is, I guess it, it sounds me like obviously the daughter said that she thinks she's fat. The main concern is that the daughter thinks. She's she's fat but yeah as a mum i don't know maybe she could take care of herself if she does she actually think she's if the mum thinks she's fine then yeah 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 difficult but if 
she said herself in the questions she could stand to lose. Yeah, yeah, there's some acknowledgement there that you know maybe she let herself go. But I, yeah. I, I always find it interesting. Obviously, this is where Kelly, you could probably help out. Like, I think sometimes mothers can get the whole the stick. Obviously, you bear you bear the brunt of carrying the child, yeah. and then obviously the changes that has on one's body, and then it's almost like you put on a bit of weight. It's like, well, I was, I was carrying a child for nine months. Like, well, how do you expect me to just snap back like that? And then I think sometimes we see celebrities, mothers who have mm. snapped back, but they've got everything mm. around to help them. They've got yeah. child minders, they've got personal trainers. Mm. They don't have to worry about going out to work and whatnot. Mm. Did, you know, I don't have to put it on you, but did you find any pressures after your children to snap back or... <laughs> Well, I was only ever going to snap back into my size 16 <laughs> jeans. <laughs> I think um, I, there was a bit of pressure, but, you know, we, we were in a very interesting time at that yeah. time. I gave birth in the height of lockdown. I was mm. kind of super content. No one was coming to my house. It was just like boobs out for eight weeks. You oh, know. Yeah. Get, get <laughs> no it. bra inside. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, how amazing that was for feeding. Just like yeah. no one could knock on my door asking for tea. It literally was like, mm. so I, I don't know if I went in, into a bit of a cave woman thing where I was just eating what the hell I wanted, um, nourishing my baby. And and then I kind of, I think I woke up and I was like, whoa, you're 14 and a half stone. And every photo you see of yourself, you're not comfortable with. Mm. And, uh, and I think I had this, a, a, a bit of an epiphany where I was like, if you're not happy, with how you look, yeah. mm. sort it out. <laughs> yeah. So it was yeah. like a catalyst. And last October, it was this like there was an epiphany moment. Somalia, there was a massive famine. Wow. Famine, and I was just getting like so fed up where we're like reading the news and then we just like carry on with our daily lives. And I was like, yeah. whoa, this is ridiculous. The famine out there was just so dramatic. I was like, right, I'm just going to run for thirty days, five k a day either 15K cycle, 5K walk or a 5K run. And I just, it started, that started the journey. Yeah. And I just did it for 30 days, raised 1800 for Oxfam. And I was like, right, this is it. I'm going to mm. be really fit, healthy. I'm going to run a 5K under 30 minutes and be an example to my girls. I think with relation to that question, I think your behaviors and language around children is so important. No. So it is important to walk around the house naked and, and be honest and open about nudity and your body, I think, and, and have not no shame around your body mm. and not have scales like obviously around or, you know, talking about yourself and each other in a beautiful way. Language. Yeah. yeah. Language can really, if you're drip feeding little words or little critiques about yourself, they're so absorbent, kids, right? Yeah, they're absolutely. taking everything on. You're curating their world. So, yeah. Did I snap back? No, I did not. I snapped out. <laughs> <laughs> I literally snapped. <laughs> I think I snapped, actually. Yeah, there was a moment that. of yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, but that's the reality. And I think that that's probably more of an honest assessment that most mothers probably go through than what we're led to believe by the media that gets put out there. I think it's what's funny as well is that, um, obviously, there's always a lot of folks on a woman's body. That even though they've been through the you know, physical uh, rigor of carrying a child again. <laughs> and it's funny because as men, everyone in relationship puts on weight. Absolutely. And as men, we just slide into it fat. And then it's just like, and then to be on, the, on social media, dad bods are hot. And us guys go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I think like men, we have like a positive disposition, on, and like it, especially like dysmorphia. Absolutely. Like your parents in as well, like you got like mum guilt and stuff. Whereas men, we'll do like one basic thing. We'll like we'll wash up a bottle and be like, now do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm dead. Father of the year. Yeah. Put a pizza in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Just like <laughs> change this nappy, by the way. Yeah. Unprompted. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Where's my bag? I can <laughs> smell his shit, and so I changed his nappy. I did that. I'm so, <laughs> but that I'm was. I'm you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that just shows how low the bar is for men when it comes to parenting. Like yeah. society has just put the bar so low that even if you're like just marginally responsible, yeah, parents, I think it's like almost 
so many others. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it comes to relationships, dating, um, you know, if, if you find a man who doesn't misbehave, he's a good man. And that, mm. that's the bar yeah. for men what because a you what a great guy. But I think, I think dads are stepping up more than they ever have. And I oh, think yeah. about like my husband, you know, being a comedian, I'm like getting those children ready to the point where they're just about to go to sleep. And I'm like, you know, part, like rugby passing yeah. them as I'm like going out the door to perform five minutes in Hatfield or whatever, you know. <laughs> like, That's dedication to the craft, yeah. Kelly. But, you know, like, there's quite a lot of parenting that has to happen to that point, but he will always kind of put them to bed if I'm gigging. And yeah. that, yeah. you know, like, I think men are more than ever. It has to be the duality, doesn't it? I mean, it has to be in, the modern, in terms of money and... Yeah, my mum, like, looks at me, parents, she always co comments and compliments. Oh, like, you're really hands-on, aren't you? And I was like, no, I don't, don't think, in my mind, but not particularly. Yeah. Like, I'll visit, I haven't done it with just with the two since we've had my son, but I always visit my mum just with me and my daughter. Yeah. That's it. Give my wife no, day off, do whatever she Absolutely. She's like, oh, isn't it really good that she's, you no, know, you're just with, with your daughter. I was like, and then you oh, drop I'm her off. I was just like, well, who else is she going to be with? If she's not with my mum, then she's going to be with her dad. And she's, I was like, no, it's just, it's really oh, good. It's really, um, but then she said, no, just generationally. That, yeah, that's... yeah. Is it from the, her, her time when, when um, the time when she was parenting herself? Was that the expectation? Her parents and... Just, like the dad weren't around. Just, like, they just go, go to work and that's it, really. Isn't it? That's... More financial prov provision. Rather than like that kind of alone time with the kids and doing having that kind of direct bond with the child and doing something mm -hmm. with the child and knowing what's going on with your kid, yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah, I think that's that's a, I think that's definitely like a generational shift with men. That but you, you've seen viral videos of like men with their family and they go, okay, what's what's your daughter's birthday? And the, and the husband's like looking at the wife. Like, it's like, not a chance. You don't know the kid's like, yeah, like, that's poor. Yeah. That's poor. That, you can't legislate. But that. it wasn't like just the one guy. It was like loads of guys. There's always different things. Like, what's what's their teacher's name? And the guy's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But that's, that's yeah, that, if that's reality for some. I guess if, if you're literally just, but that just goes back to tradition, isn't it? Like, you know, dad at work, mum sort of keeping house, so to speak, dad making sure they, the house is paid or keeping the house financially, so to speak. I've just had a flashback of taking my kid, seven-year-old home with her mate. And this is relation to the question. And I, I was sort of doing a little like cha-cha-cha down the street, leading them home. Yeah. And uh, I said, da -da -da -da, shaking, shaking my booty. And he went, you do have a big bum though, Kelly, don't you? And oh, he's wow. like a seven-year-old boy. But actually it was like a real moment of like, <laughs> And then I was like, oh, yeah, I, I guess I do, actually. We all have different shaped bottoms. Yeah. But it was like the, the brutality of kids yeah. where they're like... <laughs> yeah. What, what, when, when you, so you were just dancing? Yeah, and I think just... I was just like, da, 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 like, like handed out the snacks, like, we're going to go back to my house. And then yeah. I was like, um, I, I, I must have just said, oh, shake my booty. Anyway, we yeah. do have a big booty or something like that. They have a, do have a big <laughs> bum. <laughs> and kids it, don't hold back, man. No it, filter. It was, there was no filter. It was like... <laughs> But I had to take a moment of like going. Do you, did you take it as? It you're gonna sound wrong. It hurt. I'm obviously not, you don't want to take a compliment from a seven year old about your bottom. But did you take it? Do you think he was just being factual? Was trying to insult you or trying to compliment you? I think or... he's just say what you see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's he just saying what you. See. Yeah, I don't think there was any malice, and I think actually, he's probably accurate. But anyway, <laughs> I think um, kids can be, you know. Brutal, but also yeah. truthful. The truth, there's no... Yeah. No, I think that's the issue, isn't it? Is that... I don't think that's why this words probably hurt. Because you yeah. feel an element of truth to it, right? If someone was to call you... Well, I said this the, the person called into question. Yeah. If, if their daughter said, oh, you're fat. I thought, but I'm not. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what are you talking about? It's like, I've got a pack I go to. It's like, okay, well, that's that's a weird thing to say to me. Whereas if you actually, someone says that to you and it kind of stinks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think I'm a little bit insecure about what it's to be my own solution to it being, yeah, maybe do something with your daughter and 
work on you know health and stuff uh, whether it's changing the eating habit or I mean, actually doing an activity because that will actually give you time to go together, together and stuff like yeah that. it doesn't have to be something extreme like you know mountain biking or anything like that maybe just go for a walk with each other going yeah. keep that chat going because if she's sliding down the chair yeah. that is shame yeah yeah and, and actually and, and then you have it. to rebuild what's going on inside that child's mind like never feel embarrassed of yeah. of what we have and who we are and yeah, yeah. absolutely and who you are but i like to think but that's the thing with kids but they, more when they're teenagers obviously this one's pre pre-teens but they they value what their friends think more than anything oh, yeah. like what their mm. friends think is sort of gospel yeah. you know so, yeah. Yeah, just shut up. That's not what Janine at school thinks. And it's just like, if Janine at school is the person you look up to, then you're going to, whatever she thinks is right is what you're going to abide by. And that's where it's challenging for this kid. So this kid's probably thinking, my friends think, I don't want them to think we're fat because they, they hate fat. Maybe the friend spent all day at lunchtime berating a fat teacher. I, I don't know. I'm now just sort of making stuff up. And then she now thinking, fuck, she sat next to her mum in the car. You look like the teacher. Da, 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 da. I, I don't know, but it it just, they can construct these sort of mad scenarios in their brain. I remember talking to this Uber driver. He was like, I was like, he had a couple of girls. He had like a couple of teenage girls. I said, what is your secret right, to parenting? Yeah. Oh, what are you? <laughs> in the boot. <laughs> in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> just a boy. I, I didn't think, I thought, where'd you go with this? Like, <laughs> teenage. And, um, it's like, <laughs> no Uber pool. The tape over their mouth is fine. Um, but I was like, what's the secret to raising teenagers in London? Yeah. And he was like, one, make your home a place they always want to hang out. So, mm. like, always fill the fridge full of all the things that they love eating. Make it a place where their friends want to hang out. And then obviously part of that is also good because you kind of can see who the bad ones are yeah. and help with a bit of curation. And then his second thing, he said, make sure that they always have a little bit of cash. So they mm. always can buy their own chips. So no one's like buying them chips and then asking for mm, favours. I like that. Mm. They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're not beggy beggy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, also like I bought your chips for six days. Now show me your knickers. That yeah, you're not, yeah, no, 100%. Because that, that's how grooming sort of yeah. happens, isn't it? Like you, you owe me favour, you owe me favour, yeah. you owe me favour. You know, I did something for you, I did something for you, then they mm. guilt trip and all that type of stuff. So that's the thing. If if you're that sometimes they say if you're they you say if you got enough love from your dad, that's up then you don't have to look elsewhere mm. for love or attention or anything like that. Or it comes from the home, it comes from within the house, then you don't have to look outside for it. Mm. That's sometimes what they that, that's sometimes what they say about, you know, people who get a bit older and sort of lose their way. So what was that? Men and women? Well, probably more, obviously, men, older boys that move wayward probably need a father figure to keep them straight and narrow. Yeah. Older girls who probably move wayward if they probably look for love in the wrong places because they didn't get the love from their father at home and stuff like that. So mm. uh, I do like the advice from that Uber driver. That's really I good. love asking Uber drivers their advice. <laughs> They're wise. Some of them They're are wise. Wise, wise, wise beyond their years. This one guy, I got in a car and I was like, oh, I love this game. Can I just guess where you're from? And I was like, oh, I'm going to make a few more guesses. I was like, I reckon you're from Somalia, you're married and you've got six kids. He was like, get out of the fucking car. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, that's so yeah. specific. No, but I just like, there was just a vibe about him. Anyway, and he, he, I, I asked him the six question. Kids. Six kids. Six kids. What, what about him said six kids? Well, he, he'd so been in that that's the average for <laughs> He'd been in that Uber for like 24 hours that day, poor guy. Anyway. His advice was from naught to seven with kids, just make sure you play with them as much as possible. Yeah. Loads of play, just give them enough of that. And then seven to 14 is all about education and learning and giving knowledge. And then 14 to, tw yeah, so it's like three sets of three. 14 to 21 is about um, being their friend. And I was like, that's so cool as well. Do you think you'd be, kid, you be a kid's friend? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you think, I need, you need to be obviously, very obviously, careful with that. Obviously, your, your, your children are seven and two. So obviously they're too young. Your seven year old's too young for that. But do you think you'd be a kid's friend? I, I think know. you need to be very careful. I like to keep a little bit of like... I am a friend. A yeah. little bit of separation amongst that. But I, you know, 
I try and create a friendship with her, definitely yeah. where she can talk and we can do imaginary play and, you know, that she can she can hang with me and have good times. Be accessible. Yeah. You're going to be... Nah, that, that, he, nah we're not friends. You're going to be Nigerian dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, that's, it's still in me. No, I can't. Like, I like him. I want to be approachable. I want my son to, if he's in a situation, to be able to come to me yeah. and we can talk about it. But he's not going to be, like, coming and, like, calling me by my first name or any, anything wild Should like be, that. I've, yeah, I've got my kids, I think, if they're talking about certain things with their friends, they're like, oh, shit, 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 my dad's And that's not yeah. to keep it secrets from Yeah, me. yeah, it's yeah. It's just like, I, I just understand you're 14 or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You talk about certain things. I don't need to hear it. Absolutely. You should know that. I'm dad, and it's just like, it's, it's not really weird. weird. No, I don't have any Rizzler. We all went to school with that, that kid, right? It's just like, yeah, I was smoking cigarettes with my mum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, yeah way, when you get sick, way mom gets I was smoking at home, smoking lip and stuff. You're not, what, what is, what is yeah, this? Yeah. It's a fine line, Yeah, because it's that, that, that some, some people say that's abuse. You're no longer parenting and being the cool parent. You're, you're abusing your child, but then it, it, on the cloak of cigarette smoke. That's how I used to get a drink when I was 14. My, my mate's mum used to buy us all drink. What? Yeah. Irresponsible. So what would happen is we'd go to, in the day of school, we'd know we'd go and, it'd always be a Wednesday, I don't know why. Yeah. Happy hump day. Ha- well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you're 14, just need to get on the drink. It's weird, so we'd give him, we'd give him three quid and then... <laughs> At lunchtime, he'd give it to his mum, like, go back home at lunchtime. Then by the end of the day, we'd go to his house and pick up our three pound bottle of Lambrini. <laughs> and then we'd go up to the woods and we'd, we'd have a drink. That is, that's Essex 101. That is, that is Essex. And, and then, well, and then we, was, we used to go on like, weekends, we'd do a similar thing, like, we was about, like, I think, I was about 15. So, yeah, go to his house, there'd be a drink there. She, she'd leave the house to, to him. I know. Yeah, yeah that's no. wayward. Was that was was his house to go to then? His house to go to house, but what it was, what I only realised in hindsight, and I'll, I'll try to tell the story really quickly. So I was at my barber's um, from my mid twenties, and he goes, "Yeah, I won't say the guy's name." Yeah, but he, um, let's call the guy uh, Rod. Rod, okay, good name, good name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so the barber and he goes, "Oh yeah, because you know, uh, Rod's Rod's mom's a lesbian." And I was just like, no, she's not. And he goes, he goes, yeah, she's lesbian. I'm like, no, 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 he goes, you used to hang out with me all the time. I did not know. She was lesbian. I'm like, no, she wasn't lesbian. So what would happen is he would go around his house, uh, she'd buy a street, and then she'd go and hang out with her mate. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's, yeah, she's, 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 she's lesbian. Because what it was, was his parents would split up. So in that time, and that's what it was. They'd split up. She yeah. had broken up the home by having an affair with a woman. Oh. And I guess to kind of, she felt messed. She must felt so bad about yes. how she has messed up her family that she just kind of acquiesced to anything her kids wanted. Well, so she's like, I want my friends around and buy us booze. And she was like, okay. Wow. And it's so, so interesting. So us as four senior olds, he sent anything that our mate was going through. He didn't give him any support. We oh, yeah, he said, where's Lambrini? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting drinks over. We're playing PlayStation. I uh, said, where's your mum? Oh, she's at so-and-so's house. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just going to give a shit. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So she's just trying to appease him, but as long as he's happy, mm. she'll she'll do it, even if it meant literally yeah. and he, breaking yeah, a lot. He used to do his own tattoos and piercings, so that, that would work. Oh, he went to the But the thing is, I, I don't know him now, but I see him through Facebook. Yeah. He looks like he's really well balanced. <laughs> oh, okay. So, he came out of our race. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what work he's done on himself, but Jeez. He's, he's like a top guy. <laughs> wow. It's basically a left turn from anywhere, can't yeah. it? And, you know, being enabled alcohol, mm. you know, that, 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 that could potentially have been a slippery slope. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, of course, of course. And you start on that early as well. It's hard to get off it. Let's let's go to any. You got anything to reflect on Darren or any parenting fails you said? Some. Uh, oh, I had one. Yeah, it was pretty funny. She picked up my daughter from nursery. Uh, so no, she's got. Does she go five days a week? No, no, only two days. A week. Two days. Okay. Good. So I've gone to her room to pick her up, and she's. It's always nice to pick. Her. I don't get. I don't usually get a chance to pick her up. I usually drop her off. Yeah. Wife picks her up, 
Uh, but it's really nice to pick them up because that's when I pop through the door. She takes ages to notice me. There's like, ah, and then she just sprints. Oh, oh. Lovely. Yeah, it's great. And then she's all hyperactive and stuff and relief and messing around in the corridor. So now away from all of the staff that know who I am. And then just as we walk out in front of the other staff, she goes, where's my dad? I was just like, what? <laughs> So, where's my dad? And I was like, I, I was like, I'm, he's so silly. And the member of staff and looked at me, I was like, all right, <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what, I, what, what would I, there's, what could I have said to make me sound like I really was a kidnapped yeah. with this child? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm your dad. Uh, she would have gone, no, you're not. She would have just said something silly like that. And I'll go like, oh, I don't know where your dad is. Well, why did she do that? Because she, she's actually a funny kid. She's got, she's got funny. Oh, do so you think she did that? Just yeah, yeah. Just yeah. To show. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's, she's just got. She's, she's, she's weird. She's a comedian as well. Yeah. Keep you on your toes. Yeah, she has got like a really good like kind of comedic instinct. Where's like, my dad? Oh my <laughs> <goodness>. head's gone. <laughs> I'll lose my head. You know. Oh, yeah, I was like, I was, I was kind of like, ah, yeah, just like my dad can't tell me something. Yeah. I just, I just left. Just got rid of the car. Did you feel a bit guilty? Were you like, I, I am their dad. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say something, but it's just like. I just look like I'm kidnapped with this child. Yeah, I would have been on my phone, look at this photo from 2021 and been like, it's her. Don't, don't you see the same face? Should the staff stop this? I'm sure they were like, ooh, like you could, you have to have conviction to, to make an intervention. Yeah. They have to have enough conviction. Yeah. And I don't think in that split second was probably enough for them to be like, yeah. you're not, are you? They just watch the child get kidnapped. They just watch, <laughs> like, yeah. that's it. That's to see you on the news. As long as you pay 120 pounds a day, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my they, goodness! No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the money, honestly. Oh yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's, I think I, I see it on Twitter. People be like, it's like two grand for five days a week, full time. It's like a, it's basically another mortgage, more than people's mortgage. They, the nursery have just invited me to a Christmas event, and they want us to pay to get in. It's all right. it's all right. Five pounds. Five pounds to go. Three quid, yeah. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. So, so you, like the school, the stuff that they event, like you, that happens when you're a school parent. They're basically inviting you now, but they're just charging you for the privilege. Oh no, this is a nursery because yeah, nurseries so the nursery, yeah. are the printing twenties, aren't they? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Does the, the, your two year old go? Nursery? She goes to nursery two days a week. I kind of called that. Like, I was like, even if I haven't got a busy week, I just think it's really important. Let's just try and find the money just so there's some structure to the week. And yeah, yeah. socializing and also just for my well being, yeah. all of that. Um, but then some weeks you'll go four or five days if I'm working more. And then, but it's kind of it's a routine. And I think when you have a toddler, they definitely appreciate. Actually, I don't know if they do. I appreciate it. <laughs> I think there's something good there, though. Where everyone knows where they are for the week. Yeah. Even Agreed. if it's some months you can't afford it, you're like, why are we? This is actually really important for everyone's well-being in this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think having a having a framework is important if you can sort of get it. And I don't know. I've not. I've not. I need to start planning because my son's 13 months, and we've looked. We've discussed nursery, but we've not had a proper like sit down or look at it. But I definitely want to get him something. I've taken him to stay and play, which the council run where it's like you can take your kid for like 75 minutes 90 minutes to so go nice. to a place and they just play there's other mothers there's other kids there but he was too boisterous for the other kids because there's zero to one or one to four they're like oh because he's not fully independently mobile he has to go to the younger one but they were literally like proper babies there like probably two months old who are like coughing up their like milk and they're like lying there on their back like even, like they can't do anything they're just lying there and he's like crawling over to them or like toddling <laughs> over to them I'm like, no, like leave them and every, all the mums are all cool and relaxed and stuff but I thought no that I, he's too he's too mobile for them so he probably needs to be in the older group but yeah I am considering I think surgery. I think with childcare I think your gut says everything yeah. so make sure you go and see quite a few different nurseries mm. and you really you really thing. get a feeling in your heart and in your tummy about what and you always listen to the little just listen to the little conversations that are going on amongst it of like nursery workers just try and like really get a 360 on it yeah. because 
your guts is everything and um and when you go against your gut it's interesting things yeah yeah so, absolutely I, yeah. Pre I, pre I appreciate them little nuggets <laughs> little nuggets of wisdom i've got a parenting fail hit us That's it. That's it. um so we're potty training at the moment yeah. which <laughs> yeah it's so fun are you doing that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant. But we quite often like have to take the portable potty out. And the other day I forgot it. So Eliza is the little one in the in the, in the buggy on the school run. And um, she goes, I need a poo. And it's like two roads away from our house. And I don't have the potty. Is she wearing like, the nappy? Or no, she... knickers, knickers, knickers. knickers. Okay. Um, you've got to let them know if you wet yourself and it feels wet and it's not good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because they've got the nappy on. They won't like, feel it. I have it anyway. It's like, well, you need it, you need it. No, I've done it now. It's like, oh. Yeah. Oh. And also, that's baby. You're in your nappy, you're a baby. Yeah. You've got your big pants on. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you're a big you, girl. You're a big Okay, so it's like a transition for yeah, them. Yeah, and it's got like, you. yeah. Was your daughter interested in knickers before she... Well, I like, when we went to Primark and I went... I mean, it was quite, a, I don't know if she was invested, but I was like, here are the pack, packets of pants. Because mm. this was advice given to me at the two-year health check, actually. They said, go and buy pants together. And then she'll get into the idea that they're her big girl pants. But anyway, we're on this, we're on this school run. I, I do think that's a good piece of advice, actually. Yeah. Because then they're kind of like, oh, they're, they're invested into Take a bit of interest in it, yeah. Into those £1.50 pants. And um, <laughs> the, the 20. And um, anyway, so she was like, I need to go. And I was like, Oh, I don't have this. Um, I don't have this potty. So, I li like seven year olds. There, I'm literally improvising. There's n like we're on a road. Yeah. So I pulled down her pants, had a Kleenex in my hand, oh, and just like caught this poo. Turd. Like yeah, literally, turd. my hand was like a waiter. Like you just hovering. Took a whip, got the whole lot, and then I walked with it. Right. Two human, streets. Human, human shit. I want to go on strike. There's so many people So you had a hand. No, let, let's get this image right. You hand had a hand full of, full of turd. You got a two year old in the pram. Yeah. And then, and then got... a seven year old there. So. What do you do with the poo when you're putting your two year old back in the pram? No, she literally has pulled, pulled her pants up. You can walk no, for the no, next bit. Really you can climb in there. I think Tab's probably helped me get her yeah. pants up. And I walked this shit. Can I swear on this? Yeah, you yeah. can say whatever you like. I mean, I just like, there's so many people striking out there. Do you know what I mean? I was like, no, no. I need to be striking. This is ridiculous. I'm carrying a human shit. Yeah. So then we walk two roads. Ding dong. My <laughs> husband opens the door. Hello, everyone. How, how, how's your day been? And I literally am like, I am carrying a human shit. This is just so basic of like, it was a fail though. It was like yeah. the guilt. I shouldn't have put her in that situation. I shouldn't be like ha walking around the street with like, a poo yeah, in my yeah. Hand. Imagine if you saw someone you knew, like a neighbor. Yeah, exactly. Um, Would you just shaking their hand? <laughs> hey, no <long> time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the kind of thing you have to do. You just have to get on with it. Yeah. Improvise. Improvise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, yeah, we have. I'm not to carry this shit. <laughs> It's funny because in my head, right? Ask it because then we'll find some of the screen to do it. Mm. On the way to because uh, I was christening, yeah, that she walking down that hill. Say there was like, I need a wee wee, and we had a port and potty. It was like, <laughs> can you hold it? She's like, no, I need a wee wee. It's like we can't have a wet herself in a dress like, yeah. So yeah, so we had to just we had to try to find the most discreet place on the path. <laughs> so we kept we were kind of like behind the van. And then she had to just sit there on the potty. And it's, and it's so funny because toddlers really don't give a shit. She was yeah. just like, on the potty, just like, I'm doing the wee wee. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hurry up though, because we are in the middle. Are you, are you getting your coat out and covering, sort of doing all that type of stuff? So or? nobody's having to do that while I'm holding the buggy because it's on such a hill. Oh my goodness. Because it's like, well, how big is this potty? Like, is it like, oh. it's like a little kind of like rucks, like a rucksack size? Okay. Yeah. I feel like the walk of shame with them. Do you know? They're just so badly designed. It's just like really obvious. Like I'm a parent who's potty <laughs> training. I've got a buzzy bee one. It's just. Oh, okay. So it's. Yeah, exactly. 
So it screams out that it's a potty. It's not, it's not discreet by any stretch. Um, no. So it's, yeah, it's not cool. It's not stylish. It's not like some like the baby bags, which are like cool little compartments. Yeah, yeah, it's not one of those. No, 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 Jesus. Oh, snap. Oh, okay. You're carrying the solid case of piss. <laughs> and that's, that's what you're doing. <laughs> How many like pisses can it take before you need to like empty out? Is it? Is it like a day? Basically, like, is it like a day use? I don't know. It depends, right? Because I've found this as well with the party training. You, you become a bit of a weirdo, right? Like, Elaborate. She wins. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of wee. Oh, that's not a lot of wee. Or when she poos, because now I can see it. So I was in a nap. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's massive. So you're, drink, you're like, oh, you're drinking enough. You're drinking yeah, a lot. You need to drink more. Yeah. And, just, just, and then it's, and it's that typical parent child of going, Oh, like, yeah, the ha- a poo was really hard. Yeah, it's a hard poo. Weights and measures. And it's like, oh, no, it's a very soft poo. That's and it just, that's what you're talking about. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, Bristol School Chart. It's a whole conversation. And it's, yeah. And I was thinking the other day, <laughs> this yesterday, like, she pooed. Uh, look, I was assessing the poo and looking at her, and looking at the poo, I was like, that poo is like half the, the size of her knee. Mm. And I'm thinking, if I pooed something half the size of that <laughs> you'll be worried. I'll go to hospital. I'll go to hospital. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. Wow, Coke that can. is like we could set up an Instagram account with that kind of content. It was wild. <laughs> Third content, <laughs> Coke can, because such a small person, yeah. like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We move that, inside, we'll move that inside, inside you, yeah, 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 and then <laughs> nasty. <laughs> but it is a lot. Put I, I think that these are quite. Two to three years old, it is a lot of handling and wrangling poo and wee and yeah. isn't it? Actually and, and newborn up to three. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, like my, my boy's been constipated recently and then we've been like when he's strange, you can like see it in his face and he's like really upset and stuff like that. So we, we I want him to push it out, but then sometimes I've been like just do a bit of manual evac and stuff, and it's just like just you can see it come out, so you're like, okay, you just break off and stuff like that. And then it just is that because you're a doctor? Yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything would to you, me. Manual evacuate. No, no, when I say manual, I'm not going up, like it's stuff that he's kind of pushed out, and I'm just like, oh, pop, like the the perineum, the soft part between your anus and your penis is soft, so you just push and then it just pops out. Fantastic. So I was just like, pop. That's satisfying. I, I was just like, soft I, I, bit. Now I know that, I still want to. <laughs> so Eliza's constipated, and I'll just see her in the corner, like, yeah. and I'll be like, "Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go to the toilet?" She goes, "The corner," because she just doesn't like. She wants to just shit standing up, like this. The corner. No, no. Where do you go to the toilet? The garden, and she like the, the whole, garden. Yeah, for like the whole of like September, August to October. We just like find. Who's in the garden? Oh, she really just be in the yeah, she'd just cat. go really carnal and like. Rrr. Oh my god! Do you have a dog or anything like that? No, oh, we so... have a cat, but she, okay. she just like would. I think she just found it at ease in the fresh air. Oh, for a But what have you been doing for the constipation? He just had a bit of lactulose, so we, did that we, help? It's helped to soften it up a bit, and we probably just need to improve. I thought we that was all right, but clearly we we need to improve it a bit more if he's getting constipated. So we just so. say more fiber. Yeah, just more more water, more more fluids, more fiber. He had semi skim milk, but apparently we should be giving him more full fat, so we can move into full fat as well. And stuff we're all like. fiber deficient, I've heard. We probably don't eat enough. Yeah, get get more of a fiber day, and obviously we eat a lot of. I would say we obviously standard processed food doesn't help and whatnot. You know, all these biscuits and other other stuff that we like to enjoy. The stuff that we like to enjoy tends to be the processed stuff. But hey ho, huh? That's the problem. And they know that and they put all these preservatives in it. But I wanted to ask a few special questions to to yourself, Kate. Did you when if you don't mind, when did you first go into comedy? When did you start? So uh, it was like I about eight eight years ago. So just your your daughter just before I got pregnant with a line, um, Tabitha. Yeah. And over those eight years, like I, I had two children. Absolutely. We had the old Lockie D. Absolutely. And then I got really sick one year. I got like loads of autoimmune things. I've got an insect bite on my leg that almost 
lost my leg. Oh my goodness! Just it was just a major. It was a. It was a. Um, Definitely demanding, uh, busy year. Yeah, so it was like one of those ones where the health book came sort of top priority. So then, since Eliza, who was born in 2021, I really feel I've like put my blinkers on at that point. Like, actually, I'm really going to focus with this comedy thing and get better. Just I just want to get better. Get better. Get better. Get better. Yeah. And cool. that's that's it, really, isn't it? You just like, and then I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm getting a bit better. And then you go into another room, you're like, oh no, I've still got quite a lot yeah, to. Yeah. So, oh, oh, no, no, yeah, to do. Every, everyone's still learning. Don't use your progressive though. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because you're always meant to go. To, you were meant to go to another room and be like, oh, I thought I was. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like there's levels to this. There's levels to it. You're always improving yeah. different rooms, different styles. We were talking about the other, other week, weren't we? About when you go to a gig and you just got that that vet who's been doing it for like 25 years mm. and they're famous but they're circuit just absolutely mm. and they'll just rock up so they keep like five minutes before like, how are they <laughs> um, and they're just like, oh, like yeah they're, they're all right yeah they're, they're okay cool cool and then they'll pop their heads around the corner and they know everyone they're like you right Shirley how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, I don't know I'm a squat here it's like, can I, can I have a drink? Yeah, can I have, can I have some? I've got mine some to me, actually. Would yeah. I be ready when I come off? All right, fair. And then it's like, oh, do what? I probably should get ready. Or do to get ready to do. And it's like, well, to the stage. So, so they go on and they just destroy it. Yeah, the shut, shut the place like, down. Oh, I thought I did really well. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted, but, oh, they, they weren't laughing like that, were they? No. Yeah, the last hit different. Yeah. yeah. They're applauding their. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, they're, they're giving <laughs> it that. Probably, literally like, Snotting out their nose. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think any jokes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And they just come to the stage and be like, yeah, that no, no, was all right, wasn't it? It's all. And, and it's nothing. So it's like, oh, oh, thanks. There's my drink. Cheers. It's all like, in the so, day's work. We should, we should Brilliant. It's like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's good. Good to be around people like that. Yeah, because they think, oh, all right, there's. There's that much more yeah. to, to go towards because you see this. I remember when I first started, you'd be like an open mic tonight, and you see someone headline, they're doing 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. The pinnacle, the peak, <laughs> and they and you're there with your mates because that is a bringer, absolutely. And I told your friend, This guy's coming, he's destroyed it for 10 minutes. There's yeah, they give you some advice and you're just like, oh, listen to this person. Yeah, yes. they know what they're doing. They're big in the game. Yeah. And then two years later, you uh, you see they're still headlining that thing. And Absolutely. More, and they're just like, wait, I let this guy redirect where I was going. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. Like, this, why was I listening to this person? It's just, I can figure How out long have people. you been doing it? How long have you been doing it? Uh, 2016 for me. 2016. 2017, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Six years, six and eight years. Yeah, brilliant. Years. Yeah, so it's been fun. The reason, the reason I ask, because obviously you did it at the time when you were sort of having sort of children. Mm. Did that, has that been difficult to sort of balance, as particularly more as a mother compared to a father? Because I think I don't sit here and think, whilst there's changes to my, my career because of my child, I don't think it's going to hamper it severely. But I just wondered as a mother, one, you kind of thought of the primary caregiver, and two, do you feel that your career has been sort of hampered by sort of having children or anything like that? Uh, no, I think my career at, at points has been hampered of me overdoing things, like doing too many things. Mm -hmm. Like you, like in your little intro, which is yeah. lovely. You know, I, I've been multi-hyphen for a very long time. And I think of, of the last two years, I've kind of really narrowed uh, my focus, um, yeah. which I think has enabled me to progress in comedy because I'm not like, you know, boshing out a podcast with Mac or cosmetics or, you know, I'm just yeah. overdoing it or producing. Or I, 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 There was only so many hours in a day. And I Absolutely. think my health thing that happened was me saying, whoa, you're, you're, you are. you're maxing it. You're, you're overdoing it. You're yeah. overdoing it. And, 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 and it, and it did. And I kind of just had to stop. So I think never at any point as being a mother stopped me, just my over ambition, I think is kind of at points, um, yeah. made me stop. But I think being a mother, being any caregiver, parent, if you're tired, you're not funny. That's a fact. Mm. I, 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 I've gone out knackered like the night before, you know, baby's awake all night. 
And Caitlin Moran says, give any parent or mother um, the benefit of the doubt if they're raising a child who's under the age of three. Because you, you're tired. You're always on a kind of ebb of mm, tiredness. Absolutely. So to then go out and then like perform to... 270 people up the creek on a Friday night and you're on, oh, you're on stage at 10.15 and you're like, yeah. I was doing Weetabix at 6 a.m. Like, yeah, I'm, that it's is a, a shift. Long, it's a, it's a long, you, it's a long old day. You've done school pickup. I've like celebrated the Stone Age weaving. I've like maybe, you know, in that day done, you know, done 15 loads of washing, a self-tape, tried to make lunch for my husband, trying to do things, you know, Remember stuff, the overwhelm of life. I mean, that sounds yeah. ridiculous. Like, no, it's the I've mental load. Given, it's, the, it's the mental load. The mental load, load. And I think actually to do comedy sometimes amongst all of that. Yeah. It's like, it's the, always at the end of the day as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, I very am late. now like, I get a little secret nap in or I do a 20 minute meditation just to kind of get my head back into the space of, Actually, yeah, you're gonna fucking you're gonna go and do this now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, you have to find energy. Of course. So yeah, that's sometimes my challenge. But never being a mother, I mean, I've chosen this wonderful life. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and yeah, I like it. Phrase like that, to be fair. I like that you're saying it's not actually being a mum; it's doing lots of different things is the issue. The context yeah. switching is like. Well, I didn't like doing like a self tape and then. Well, you might get up, you're doing the Weetabix, then yeah. um, you're writing a quick email, yeah. like you've got to reply to someone, and then and then your husband comes and goes, the car's broken down, you know, because it's all logistics chat at, when you're raising young kids, yeah. isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The cat needs worming, the boiler's broken, you know, it's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Constant, all of that. And, and, then, and then you might have 15 hours worth of a day, and then you're going on stage. Yeah. Mm. Is your husband, does he work from home or did he work out the house? He or? predominantly works from home. Oh, yeah. He's a nice. computer programmer. Um, and he's just been 100% behind me. He's like in my front row clapping. And I'm really lucky. And he's really fit. I'm really, I've done well. <laughs> You've I've lucked out. Well. You've lucked out. He is ridiculous. He, a year on year. He's like a fine camembert, wine camembert. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, 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 yeah. He's... I'm feeling quite grateful about Good. that one. Well done. Yeah. Well, well done. We just did 10 months of um, marriage counselling, actually. Sorry, Pete. And, um, yeah. And when you're raising young kids, actually, because of that logistic chat and you're not like getting, you're getting snippets of conversation where you're not like taking the time. So we did this, we invested and it was amazing. And actually on the back of that, marriage has just been a really good, healthy place. Absolutely. I'd really recommend it to yeah. anyone. I, that, I think that's the thing. You, you become parents and you forget at one point you guys were dating. Yeah. yeah. Like it wasn't just logistical chat yeah. or we've got to do this got that there was like love we'll, we'll sp you'll spend time voluntary because you wanted to because you enjoyed yeah. it and then a child comes into the situation and the whole dynamic yeah. has changed and the relationship you once had is gone yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's me, me and my uh yeah we were once, once he starts sleeping but yeah we're still together we're still 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 and it's funny, our evenings consist of either me weighing up whether I'm go we're going to finish doing the house stuff first, then knowing that we're just not going to talk to each other, we're both going to fall asleep. Yeah. Or try to watch something together, yeah. but then knowing that there's a sink for the washing that needs to be done, and then invariably falling asleep on watching something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably gigging or... All week, so you've been out so much this week. So it's like, all right, next week I'm not kicking that much. And then when I'm in, it's like we don't actually do anything. We're both just shattered, mm -hmm. right? just life and stuff. And it's just like, this is our intimacy. You sit next to each other on the sofa and fall yeah. asleep. Or after you put it to bed, she'll go to bed, not to sleep, but to watch something on the phone. Yeah. She wants me to sit with her. And by the time, I, maybe if I take anything over 45 minutes to get upstairs, She's, actually... She's conked, yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't, you don't get this quality sort of. And that's probably, and if your, I don't, if your foundations aren't strong enough, that's where problems will come. Mm -hmm. Clearly, I, I don't think that's your situation, no. but I just think like if people's foundations aren't strong enough, that will be enough because it's like, well, well, I'm not, you know. Obviously, everyone's got their desires and wants and physical touches stuff like that, but it's like we're not doing what we used to do. 
And that's a problem for some couples. And that's where problems arise and stuff like also, that. Also, I think right, it is important to be intimate. However, just make the effort. However, It's like going to the gym. If you, you never regret it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and even if it's like a quick shifty, whatever, whatever, you, whatever <laughs> you need to do, but just to, 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 keep, get, to get out of the system. Just the engagement a little bit. Because like, <laughs> if everyone's happy on that level, it's amazing the energy changes in the house. Yeah. I think like, not to be sort of sordid, but I just mm. think actually in a foundation of marriage, that is really important. Because oh, actually- yeah, You, you, you want to feel loved, you want to feel sexy, you want to feel- You've got an house mate, yeah. so you 100%. Yeah. Then, yeah. You're just, uh, you're just a project team. Just yeah, the, project. You, the project team, <laughs> just, you know, the kids, the house, just like, yeah. You, Jobs. Yeah, you just sit down and just itemize things that need to be done. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It needs it needs to be more than yeah yeah. yeah, yeah ticking. <laughs> <laughs> I did see one of your jokes you posted online, and I thought, no, that is that is what marriage is. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't I don't like you post online, so I guess I can yeah. say it. Really. <laughs> marriage is about fifty percent shouted through yeah. through your floorboards, going what mm. what and then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is real. That it's is real what life. marriage is. Yeah. Chatted uh, shit but between the floorboards. Yeah, I guess if you don't have those kind of um, you know, just intimate moments, I think um things like I remember, I remember getting this advice from someone I used to work with actually they said oh, um, always continue to date. Mm. Mm. And um I was like, mm, whatever, I mean, we didn't have kids. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, it's like I'm going, oh, do I? We haven't actually gone out that often, so I'm like, I'll call my mum because I speak to her quite often. You just watch your kids for an evening. Yeah, yeah, nice. And it's just something like it's really just the fact that you're just adults. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The first one we went on was literally went to went to the cinema and we was going to get something to eat, and it was like I'm not really that hungry. So what should we do? And we ended up going like mini golf. Oh, that's, that's so nice. nice. Yeah. That's it was nice. Just like, yeah, it's just the fact that you could just, we didn't even chat that much. It was just yeah. messing In, around. Yeah. Enjoying each other's company. Yeah. Having yeah. a laugh. Yeah, and just being able to put your drink there and know that you can just pick it back up for a drink. It's not going to be knocked over yeah, or anything so like nice. that. But it was this weird thing of going, you kind of have this kind of phantom child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can chat away, but... <laughs> it's also really important not to talk about your kids yeah, yeah. when you're dating. Yeah, if you're yeah. out on date night, just going, oh, wasn't it? You know, yeah, it's very easy very just to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's very, very true. It's very, very true. Remember that there's a reason why you guys got together, and sometimes you need to refresh that in the relationship because yeah. you two are in a marriage first. There are kids, but your husband and wife yeah. first. Yeah. So let's end on that positive note. That's been an episode of Late Nights and Wet Wives. I've been Mike Wackadiri. To the left, to the left has been... Griffiths. And our very, very special guest... Kelly Ford. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great week and good night, people. Peace. Thank you. Aww, thanks, guys.